Welcome back, everyone. I hope you are all enjoying fall. I have been a busy little bee over here in the kitchen, um, gathering out in the woods and at the farm and in my yard, all the produce, um, you know, all my fall food finds. Uh, so my dehydrator has been going pretty much 24-7. <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, maximize the use of everything because uh, I can't use it all now. So it's great because, you know, I have a lot of stuff set aside for the winter. We've been enjoying lots of soups and salads. It's, you know, that time of year where we dance between all the lettuces still coming in, you know, all the fresh stuff that can be put into a salad you know, we've got those warm midday temps, but chillier nights and mornings over here uh, on the East Coast. So to me, it's like the best of both worlds, and I just love it. Uh, my CSA is going really strong right now. Um, I do my pickups every Tuesday with my 17-year-old son, who, by the way, is unschooled. And yesterday, he requested that I teach him all about food and nutrition. Of course, I was delighted to hear that and happy to do so. And it, it's not the first time he's requested this. Um, so on the drive there, you know, I dove into, gosh, I went back in time, the evolution of food. You know, I wanted him to understand how we got here, you know, and what humans are supposed to eat and how hard it is to do so in the modern day and, you know, why I go through the extent to secure food that I do. Um, we then discussed, you know, the main macros, protein, fats, and carbs, <laughs> um, you know, which was a lot of fun. Um, I then emphasized why plants really should be the biggest category. And then of course we talked about the nutrition in each of the, um, plants that we picked up at the farm. Um, you know, which is a lot of stuff. Like we got a lot of really good diversity. Um, so by the end, he was like, whoa, I, I'm not sure I'm going to remember all that. And I was like, that's okay. You know, it takes a lot of repetition to feel, you know, competent in any, you know, understanding of any, you know, uh, category of something that you want to learn, right? It takes repetition. But, you know, I told him like, you're fortunate enough to get to experience everything that I just talked to you about. You get to experience the summary of all of that every day in practice by what we do at home. Um, so, you know, just remember that. And so today I want to do a little dive into a topic that's central to my work, um, which is the microbiome and why I believe healing your gut means rebuilding your inner ecosystem. Um, you know, what we eat and how it's produced has never been static. <laughs> um, our relationship with food constantly evolves as we adapt to our environment and, uh, and deepen our understanding of health, right? So just like anything in life, though we can cling to patterns, um, whether they serve us or not, because often they just, they feel familiar, right? So we know that change can be uncomfortable and it often takes, you know, a powerful nudge or maybe a wake up call, um, a health shift or that deep internal voice urging us to evolve, right? Our ancestors would have just had to move and adapt to the new environments, right? Nowadays, we just have 24-7, 365 lights on, grocery stores everywhere, stuff globally, you know, at our ready. So it's a little, it's a little trickier these days to um, evolve and adapt and such. So in the realm of gut health, you know, um, I often see women stuck in familiar but ineffective patterns and I was also among them. Um, many come to me after years of trying various health protocols, even mineral balancing protocols with different practitioners. You know, they've dealt with uh, long-standing digestive issues, maybe constipation or bloating or food sensitivities, often 
you know, compounded by years of antibiotic or birth control use, which also disrupted their microbiomes. Um, Over the years, maybe they've been through endless detoxes, restrictive diets, supplement regimens, um, all in the name of healing their gut. Um, But, you know, unfortunately, instead of like true progress, uh, they find themselves feeling you know, worse a lot of times, relapsing often, maybe better at first and then relapse, a little better relapse, you know. And so a lot of times they're just like so frustrated or they say I'm stuck or they're just burned out of the whole thing, right? And a big part of the problem is, you know, the microbiome. Um, you know, collectively and culturally, we've we've got a lot of things that have been disruptive to it, right? So we've got, you know, years of antibiotic usage, chronic infections, um, a poor diet, you know, leaving us with disrupted gut ecosystems. Um, this leads to so many things, you know, yeast overgrowth, leaky gut, intestinal inflammation, Um you know, they've been following protocols that are more forceful to try to get their bodies to detox, right? Um, but this approach often backfires, you know, leaving people depleted and wondering, gosh, is there a better way? You know, is there a more sustainable way forward? Can it be gentle, please? <laughs> and um, that's when they come to me, you know, and what resonates most with them is, Uh, this whole idea of restoring balance by focusing on nourishing the body, the microbiome, you know, minerals. Um, And we can actually address our gut imbalances without, you know, um, strict diets, harsh detoxes, um, you know, all of this stuff. So without, and, and it's less overwhelming, right? Even though, you know, it takes effort. It still takes effort. It still takes work, but it's, it's not this, um, It almost feels like cat and mouse, you know? So my goal is to help people heal at a better pace, you know, maybe their own pace um, with the understanding of what's really going on in their microbiome, in their body, right? So that it's more customized to them um, in the current place of life they're in, right? So that they can make progress, lasting progress, right? So I... I, um, I want to tell a little story. You know, I, back in 2014, I created and launched a course called Heal Your Gut, which covered everything from upper digestion to intestinal health. You know, it offered um, practical tools to help people manage their gut symptoms. Um, And it came at a time when diets like GAPS, uh, Gut and Psychology Syndrome, SCD, the specific carbohydrate diet, and later, the low FODMAPs diet were gaining popularity. Does anyone remember the specific carbohydrate diet? Oh, my word. I forgot all about it until recently. It was one of those, like, confusing and restrictive approaches that people were trying. I, I tried to try it. And I was like, eh, nah, this is ridiculous. I'm not doing that. Um, so, anyways, the course that I created was well-loved, um, but... As I worked with more people, I just began to see its limitations, right? Um, The one-size-fits-all protocols, you know, I I had learned and was taught. um, They just didn't address the unique needs of each individual's microbiome. Um, You know, gut issues like leaky gut, dysbiosis, inflammation, right? Everyone's version of that could be varied and different, right? So it just felt like, gosh, we need more nuance. We need more specificity. And so the generalized diets of the time and, you know, these specific protocols to, you know, fix XYZ PDQ problem really were trying, they they, they at best were scratching the surface. They really weren't um, a resolution, a true resolution, right? So that's when I began to search for more. And, you know, of course, you all know I started working with hair tissue mineral analysis. Um, And to me at the time, that like revealed so much more about a person's health than just any specific targeted diet could. Um, 
like the three that I just mentioned, plus there's a million others, right? You know, we have the autoimmune paleo and, you know, we could go on and on and on and spend a year talking about all these freaking diets. Um, And I could see patterns of, you know, systemic imbalance, mineral imbalance that were at the root of many people's digestive gut issues that were affecting them in their whole health, right? And so as I started to do that work, I realized, wow, okay, we can definitely get more nuanced here. However, (laughs) it wasn't enough, right? So I started working with, um, you know, the, um, I wanted to get more into the microbiome as I learned uh, that this was really key. So I found um, the BiomeFX genome stool test, um, which began to really uncover the deeper complexities of gut health for me. And it's been quite an evolution of learning um, because it really helped me get a clearer picture of the unique imbalances in an individual's microbiome. And it taught me more about the microbiome than anything had yet. And so it was really cool to get into these two tests to see the body better and uh, learn more and be able to have a more precise approach, even though, you know, we still have to have some uh, nuance, right? Some unknown, uh, because once you get into someone's gut, they're going to feel however they feel as we work things out, right? Um, So it's been quite the learning curve, right? Um, but the focus has been on rebuilding and restoring function. And this is why I think most gut health advice misses the mark today because, you know, we're just not seeing the whole picture, right? So, and we know that gut, the gut, when I talk about the gut, you guys, and the microbiome, it, you have to understand it isn't just about digestion only. It affects everything, um, everything that you know, human health relies upon is going to be impacted by your microbiome. So your brain, your hormones, your detox pathways, your immune system, your metabolism, they're all intricately connected to your gut health. Um, Your microbiome contains, you know, a lot of facets to it, um, but it's where your microbes live and, um, we are actually more microbes than we are human cells. So we have to remember this. Um, We're still learning, guys. And, you know, we're always playing catch up. (laughs) So when your microbiome is out of balance, which I will be honest, most modern humans is wildly out of balance, um, it's not going to just show up in a digestive symptom, right? Um, like heartburn or bloating. Um, Although we have a lot of people experiencing digestive related symptoms specifically. Um, It can actually manifest as other things, brain fog, chronic pain, chronic pain, deferred pain. Have you ever heard of that? Hormone imbalances or even, you know, a haywire immune system. So the problem that I've seen with many gut health related protocols is that they focus on maybe like a quicker fix, right? Or a rigid approach, right? So like a long-term restrictive diet. And when I say long-term, even months, like three or more months is is too long. It's too long. Um, Or like repeated killing protocols. And oftentimes they're harsher than people realize. Um, or, you know, piling on like tons and tons of supplements into a gut that's like already struggling, (laughs) you know, without really understanding uh, what is going on, right? So this leads often to unfortunately more imbalance or distress in the body. Um, So like, I'll just give you a super quick example. I've talked about this on the podcast before, but if you don't have enough bile production. We could talk about hydrochloric acid production. We could talk about all the different things you need. Um, But if you don't have enough bile production, your body can't detoxify properly or maintain microbial balance in your small intestine. And that is one of the things that can lead to intestinal bacterial overgrowth, um, things like SIBO, right, which is behind 
things like IBS, right? So a lot of people don't realize that, um, you know, we got to fix these things first. And your microbiome is an ecosystem and it needs to be nurtured, not like micromanaged with aggressive interventions. It's, it's kind of like if you think about what we've done in the ecosystem, right, in growing food, we have like disrupted land, we've planted singular crops. And in order for those singular crops to now actually thrive, we've had to do all kinds of interventions that are not natural, that are aggressive, that are causing a lot of problems. So like if you guys have studied at all the problem with how we've done this, you understand um, it's it's deviating so far from a natural ecosystem and creating way more problems. And the more we try to clean up the problem instead of like reroute and go back, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just like a never ending vicious cycle, right? So we have to think about that too when we think about the ecosystem within us. Healing the gut isn't about forcing detox because we now have a deranged, uh, imbalanced ecosystem, right? Uh, restricting foods, you know, the more you restrict, the more restrictive you end up becoming, right? So we want to coax the microbiome back into balance by addressing whatever root imbalances are there and creating more resilience. Um, you know, like, so we want to know who is in our gut, what are they doing in there, and how can we influence them in a in a balanced way, in a gentle way, in a less aggressive way, right? And and when I say who, I mean your microbes, um, sometimes pathogens. And there's a lot to talk about when it comes to that. And maybe I'll do an episode more on all the different types of phyla and families and whatnot. Um, but, you know, there's a lot going on in there that we are not taking into consideration. And what we really want to be doing is increasing the diversity and increasing the balance of the diversity so that certain uh, microbes aren't in larger uh, quantities causing problems. Because um, some are, you know, act at gram negatives can act as pathobionts instead of, you know, be uh, helpful to us when they are, you know, overgrown versus like um, balanced with all the different types of species we want in there. So we also know that a healthy microbiome does a lot more than just digest our food. It actually helps detoxify harmful substances, right? So we know that microbes can actually deal with things like xenoestrogens, heavy metals, microplastics. There's been a lot of research uh, on this and findings uh, about how they do that, which is super cool. Um, so when your microbiome is functioning well, meaning you have a diverse, balanced population, um, it supports your liver. It helps regulate your immune system. You know, it's very protective and it can protect you from all the more chronic things of our times related to the gut. So, you know, we've got things like Crohn's and colitis and SIBO, but even, you know, all the autoimmune conditions of our time and so much more, right? So when your gut is out of balance, your body's going to struggle to detoxify, right? And it's not about like, here, let me do some crazy liver cleanse. It's you, you, you have to fix the function. So you're not repeatedly doing cleanse after cleanse after cleanse or a bajillion coffee enemas for years or whatever, right? You're actually correcting your ability to detoxify and function properly. And then you are now no longer susceptible to all the chronic health issues of our time. By the way, from what I understand, we now know there are over like 140 autoimmune diseases, something that was only just starting to be understood when I began my practice in 2012. <laughs> oh my goodness. And, you know, many of which start because the microbiome and immune system are no longer communicating properly. 
right? How did we get here? We know I've talked about this a lot. I talk about this in all my podcasts in some form or fashion. We know that the modern lifestyle is just wreaking havoc on our microbiomes, right? I talked about this more in my leaky gut episode. Please go back and check that out. It's in the show notes. Um, you know, we know processed foods, they don't resemble the natural foods from nature. They have, you know, we have consumed very little diversity of plants um, the entire time we've all likely been alive, as well as fermentable fibers. We don't eat healthy color. We eat colorful food dyes in our diets. <laughs> We're supposed to be eating the rainbow. Um, it's so cool when you look at the different phytochemicals and such in different colors. It is wild and fascinating how cool nature is. But we don't do that. Uh, most people eat like shades of tan and brown and, you know, a little bit of green. <laughs> um, we've overused antibiotics to kingdom come. And I don't just mean rounds of antibiotics for when you're sick. Like they're in the you know, animal feed. They're in our waterways. Um, there's so many places. Um, even the natural ones, right? Because antibiotic means anti-life, right? Uh, again, lack of movement, poor sleep, you know, all the stress, the stress, the stress, the stress, you know, all our modern lifestyle literally is like not conducive to healthy microbiome, right? And we know, um, if you've studied ancestral health at all without super bias, um, you know that they ate seasonal diets. Um, if you foraged at all, you're going to understand this better. <laughs> um, you know, they would travel and they would find hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different types of foods. So they would eat, you know, 600 or so is what, you know, the number that I, we've come up with. But annually, they'd eat a lot more um foods than we even maybe do in our lifetime, uh, living on a standard American diet or even just living in the United States, right? I think it's safe to say that many Americans eat maybe only a dozen or so foods on the daily, right? Like they're in that pattern of repetition that I talked about at the beginning. Um, so that's a really big problem because you cannot have a thriving microbiome with the foods that they're consuming, let alone, you know, the, just the dozens, right? So for me, you know, the foraging has opened my eyes so wide to just how little we know about the, the wild plants, let alone the plants that would have nourished us. Um, and, and wow, it's just profound. So <laughs> we've come a long way off path off off the tracks <laughs> um we also you know we would have been outside the majority of the time and exposed to the natural elements where we would have received microbes from nature right we would have um been moving and interacting which movement is huge to to support our microbiomes by the way right so i also talked a lot about you know even just walking barefoot or grounding and how that can help us and our microbiome as well. So definitely check out my rewild your feet episode if you're into that. And so anyways, I could go on and on about all of this, but one of the biggest mistakes people make in their gut healing journey is relying on these longer term restrictive diets or staying in a limited window or not window, li limited amounts of foods, right? Um, the restrictive diets, they might seem helpful short term um, for people sometimes, um, but I got to be honest, you guys, they often do more harm than good because they're going to starve the microbiome of things that it needs to help those little microbes uh, be nourished and to flourish and grow and do their functions that um, are absolutely necessary for our whole health. So you know, to me, gut healing is not about taking out foods, right? We should be working to increase our tolerance to a wider, more diverse array of well-raised foods. Now, I know because of, you know, what's going on in people's guts, we may have sensitivities to things, but that doesn't mean, 
you know, we should avoid them all forever. <clears throat> um, we, we can get more nuanced about this, um, increasing the foods in different ways while we're also bringing down the inflammation in the gut um, so they are better tolerated. You know, because the the reality is dysregulated microbiomes do lead to food intolerances. Um, And that is what does drive people to more restrictive diets. But guys, this creates a vicious cycle of imbalance. And some people, I'm, I'm seeing this more and more, they've restricted for so long that they've become so sensitive and can barely tolerate any foods anymore. And then when it comes time to try to heal, it's like they can't tolerate anything. And that's a, just a very difficult place to be. Um, and in my opinion, that should not be happening as much as I see it happening. Uh, please, let's turn this ship around. Uh, and what's more is harsh killing protocols can actually worsen dysbiosis as they can you know, disrupt the microbial balance without giving your body the tools it needs to restore it. You know, the microbiome is not static. You could take something antibiotic or antimicrobial um, and within hours of taking those elements, um, the microbes can grow back in a more disordered way, right? And this can possibly exacerbate the issues that you're trying to resolve. Oh my goodness. So, you know, I've had a lot of women tell me they've been on round after round of antimicrobials, um, you know, more of this focus on killing what they don't want there than on building what they do want there. And the thing is, please remember antimicrobial is antimicrobes. You know, we want, what we want in our microbiome is balance, a balanced ecosystem, just like a thriving forest. Um, In my last episode, I talked about mushrooms and the mycelium network. And if you even understand that just a teeny tiny bit, you might start to realize how that makes sense in our inner ecosystem as well. Um, And then of course, we have a lot of confusion around probiotics and fermented foods. Um, While they both can be beneficial, um, there's a lot to know. And there's a lot that we have wrong about this, right? So if your microbiome is severely imbalanced, these things are not going to do what most people think they will do, right? So I'll talk more about fermented foods in an upcoming episode. Which, by the way, I love properly prepared fermented foods. Um, They have been a part of my life for a really long time. But we can't really bank on them to do what we think they're going to do. Like, we think they're going to repopulate our guts. Like, I've seen people be like, I don't buy probiotics. I eat probiotic pickles. And I'm like, okay, well, that's cool. Eat the probiotic pickles, but... Can we not call them that? Because there's a lot you don't understand. Um, It's just, you know, it's oversimplifying something that's unfortunately a little more complicated. In the meantime, definitely check out my episode about Let's Talk About Probiotics. I did broach the subject, try to take away some of the confusion, Um, you know, but fermented foods are not uh, a direct way to repopulate your gut microbes. Um, There's a lot to say about that. So I'll get into that in in a separate episode. So, you know, healing your gut, healing the microbiome, rebuilding the microbiome is about actually building resilience. You know, we've done a lot of this, like throwing a Band-Aid on, right? This is what we've done um, because we came from the allopathic paradigm into the holistic paradigm doing the same stuff, <clears throat> just with ingredients that are not from pharma, but we're still doing a lot of the same things. Instead of repairing and rebuilding, we're doing these like protocols and it's trying to treat symptoms and it's not restoring the ecosystem, you know? And the truth is, is our 
microbiome is an ecosystem and ecosystems require ongoing care and stewardship. We don't understand this because we're not doing it. We're not living this way in the modern world. If we understand how we would have interacted with the ecosystem and collaborated with the ecosystem and the land, we might begin to kind of wrap our heads around this a little bit, but modern humans are not living this way, right? So we have to kind of see that big picture of like how we are living and realize like how we're now approaching our health as well in light of that, right? So it cannot be about quick fixes anymore, you guys. It's absolutely not going to work. It's about taking the time to nourish yourself. And this takes time. It's, it goes deep, you know, nourishing your gut. It, it's, I'm sorry that the modern gut is such a mess, but it, if we understand how we got here, the good news is, is we can reroute ourselves and we can do a lot, even just in a year, seeing how that can impact, uh, you know, your gut. If you start to really nourish and feed yourself those plants and do all the right things, um, you know, it's amazing what you can accomplish, um, and how, how you can restore balance and, really build lasting health. So um, in my work, you know, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to go beyond these surface symptoms to help people rewrite their health stories, right? You know, we've got so much chronic fatigue in the world. We've got so much, you know, mental fog, brain fog, cognitive issues, mood related things um, poor sleep. Like, I don't know anyone who's really sleeping well, you know, and none of these are random. None of these are separate from one another. They're clues that your body is giving you. So that's why I love the tools that I use. I I love the HTMA and the biome effects because we can connect the dots and uncover the deeper imbalances at play for individuals. So anyways, I am not here for quick fixes, guys. I'm here to walk with people through a transformative journey where we can dive deeper, you know, and really resolve root causes and create lasting change. And so people have to come to the realization that, you know, to build a help, to build a solid foundation, to build a house that stays solid, you know, you got to lay down the bricks properly. Um, so this is, you know, just really about healing from the inside out, rebuilding your microbiome, restoring your health, waking up every day, feeling more like yourself, Um, So I hope that you found this. This is just a kind of big overview here of the trends that I've seen as it relates to this specific area of our health. Um, And I just see it to be such a a foundational piece that we all could stand to address. So if it resonated with you, stay tuned. I've got more coming to expound further. We're going to keep talking about this. Um, But until next time. Stay wild and well.